What's up guys? In this video we're going to talk about how to convert an Epsilon NFA to a regular old DFA. There's a couple things we need to know. We need to know the e-closure and how to do that. And we also need to have a table where we're looking at every possible input of the ENFA, but without its Epsilon transition. So in this example we see we only have one Epsilon transition. So in our table we don't put an Epsilon. We're trying to eliminate it so we don't include it. We only have A and B, as we can see here. So the first thing we're doing is we're getting the epsilon, or the uh, the the e closure of the initial state. Always, always, always the the e closure of just the initial state. So the e closure is essentially just which states can we have just epsilon transitions on. So if we're getting the e-closure of the initial state, then it will always be itself. And because we have this guy here goes to 3, we also have 3. Now if you were to take the e-closure of something like 2, we obviously see that there's no epsilon transitions. So the ep the e closure of a state is always itself as well as whichever states any epsilon transitions go to so because we are only looking at the initial state here we can put in states one and three into our little box this is where things get a little tricky because we're going to start using algebraic notation so again the idea here is that we're trying to convert the ENFA to a DFA. So we have our delta here, and we'll put in the states that we're looking at, the set of states that we're looking at, as well as the input that we want to do. So here, since we're working with the first column, we'll do A, and because we have this set of states here, the one that we're starting with, that's the one that we put in. So now we want to take the E closure of the union of all states in this set. So we have another delta here because this represents the transition in the ENFA, which is why we have delta E here. We have delta D here because this is the state function that we're looking at for the DFA. All right, so let's finish this up. And we're looking at state one on a union. State three on a. So when you're, if you recall from set theory, when you're doing the union, it's essentially an and. It's just mixing two things together. So before we even look at the closure, we'll do the union. So we look at what happens when we plug a1, or sorry, what happens when we plug an a into state 1. Doesn't look like anything happens. We can't plug an a into state 1. So we end up with the empty state. So that's nothing. There's literally nothing you can do with an a on 1. Now we union that with 3 on a. So what happens? Well, we get 1. So now we're essentially just taking the closure of state 1, which we've already done. We already know the answer to that. That's just 1 and 3. So then we can put that in our fancy table. That is just 1 and 3 again. So let's go a little bit quicker now. doing input B, getting the E closure of, oops, let's put that in there too, on 1, what happens if we get B union, uh, oops, there we go, on 3, B. Okay. So what happens when we get a B on 1? We move to 2. And yeah, that's it. 
Okay, union, what happens when we get a B on three? Nothing. So that's just the empty set. What is the eclosure of two? It's just itself as we went over earlier. So I can put that in our table. Oops. Now this is where the table comes in handy. This is where it's pretty necessary to have. Basically what the table allows you to do is to determine which state you should be looking at next, which set of states you should be looking at next. So you go from left to right and you just look at the first one that you haven't done yet. So if we look from left to right in our table, on input A we have 1 and 3. We've already done 1 and 3, that's right here, we don't need to do it again. But we have 2 here. So 2 is next on the list. So we'll do our delta function. 4, 2 on A. Since we only have one state, we end it there. We don't need a union <clears throat> because there's nothing to unionize. And we end up with the e closure of. Oops. There's more than that. Okay, there we go. So we end up with two. So 2 on A goes to itself as well as 3. So we end up having to get the closure of 2 and 3 because there are no epsilon transitions going from 2 or 3. That is just equal to 2, 3. So now we put 2, 3 in here. I keep changing colors. I'm sorry. It's inconsistent. <laughs> OK. And now we'll do the same thing on B. I'll just cut out for a sec while I do that. OK, so I hope everyone understands what happened here. Uh, again, we're just looking at what happens to the state set of states with containing just state 2 on the input B. We get the eclosure of 2 on B. 2 on B is just 3, as we can see here. And then we take the eclosure of 3. Because there are no epsilon transitions going from 3, it's just itself. So we end up with just state 3. And we put it in the table here. OK, so now we decide the next state again. And then after I do this, I'm going to cut out. I'm going to complete the full exercise. And then we'll be done. Uh, so we haven't done 2 and 3 yet. Because again, we're moving from left to right. We haven't done 2 and 3 yet. So we'll put that bad boy here, and then we'll get started on that. So again, I'm going to cut out, and I'll be back in a sec with this whole thing finished. OK, so <laughs> this looks like a bit of a mess, so I numbered it off for you guys. Um, I noticed while I was going through this that there was actually a couple answers, or a couple mistakes in my answers. So I'm hoping that they were mistakes, and I'm just not messing up. Like here it said 1 and 3, which doesn't really make any sense because if we look at the denomination here, we're taking what happens to 1 on A, nothing, right, which is what we have. And then what happens to 2 on A, um, it goes to itself and 3, which is what we have here. And what happens to 3 on A goes to 1. So then if you take the closure of 1, 2, 3, you'll end up with 1, 2, 3, right? Anyway, I could be wrong. I hope I'm not. Uh, I hope the concept is relatively clear regardless. Um, so now I suppose we'll just go right into drawing the D DFA. So first we have our initial state. And we will have state 2, state 2, 3, state 3, and then a state 1, 2, 3. 
apologize for my curly brackets, by the way. All right, I'm going to cut out for a sec, and I'm just going to draw the transitions. And I'm basically just using this table. I'm just following the table. So all of my states are in this column. And then in state 1 and 3, when we get an A, we'll go to 1 and 3. Right? That kind of thing. So I'll cut out for a sec, and I'll finish this up. All right, so I hope that's correct. It makes sense why it would be correct, at least, right? I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. So I'll just erase these arrows real quick. And um, while I was going through this, I noticed that this might be a little unclear why I did this. So here, I could have easily done 1, 2, and 3 first before 3. And it's, it's a little difficult to explain, but basically when we're moving left to right, we end up with a bit of a backlog if we end up skipping over a state. So if we notice here in line 2, we have 2 and 3 for A and 3 for B. So we pick 2 and 3 because we're moving from left to right. It's the first one that we haven't done yet. And then we do it. But now we have a new one here, but we still haven't done 3 in the second line moving from left to right. So we scooch 3 down here, we put 1, 2, 3 on hold, and then we do number 3, and then once we're done that one, now we can move on to 1, 2, and 3. So you want to make sure that you're getting all of these sets of states done when you're moving from left to right. And now the way that we pick our initial and final states is just the first and the last lines in the list. So that means 1 and 3 will be our initial, which I've already marked. And then 1, 2, and 3 should be our final. All right, I think that's it. Uh, this video is getting a little bit long. Sorry about that. Uh, some people have been complaining that I go a little bit too slow. Uh, I apologize. YouTube does have a fast forward feature where you can like make the video go by faster. So if you guys are into that, go for it. Uh, I like explaining things a little bit slowly just because I learn a little bit better that way personally. Um, but if you don't, that's totally cool. Don't worry about it. Feel free to make the video faster. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and suggest ideas for new videos. Happy studying.